Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having an excellent morning. Uh, welcome to Tarot Talk, the new name of this morning show that I'm doing. Um, now on today's show, I'll be uh, giving a the top horoscopes for planting most likely to have a green thumb and which plants are best for your zodiac sign which I found interesting and for a change I am using a different set of cards. One I've used before, but this is this is a little bit different. And you have to excuse me, folks. I'm not quite awake. I overslept this morning a bit. And I haven't had my first pot of coffee in me yet. Oh, before I get started, I want to show you all. A while back, and I hide that. One. A while back, I had gotten these oracle cards that you you color yourself. They they're black and white, and you color in yourself. Well, during my brief hiatus last month, or last week, I should say, I, uh, I worked on one. And that's what I did with the one. It's called Boundaries. And it's a guy meditating, and what I tried to draw or color in here is the fact that the red is the anger and the emotions and stuff. And within his immediate circle, I put, uh, you know, light, white, and, and blue and stuff, the brighter colors, to kind of indicate that uh, he's pushing away the anger out of his immediate area he's meditating and he's at peace and calm and he's you know what i mean so that's that's one i've gotten done now i've got a big stack of them to do i'll, I'll probably be a year or more trying to get these done because that took me a whole afternoon pretty much to work on i haven't colored since i was a kid so anyway, I'm using the the antique anatomy deck. So let's see what comes up. Now, this one is not wanting to go in with the rest it kind of popped out on its own and didn't fly out but it's kind of like that one card just kind of came out and it's not wanting to go back in the deck so let me see what this one says oh okay You have the devil. Now, other names for the devil card is Pan and Temptation. It's the number 15 numerologically. And um, the astrological sign or planet is Capricorn, the goat. The element is air. The Hebrew letter is Ayin which is symbolized by the eye, meaning clear vision. On the Tree of Life pathway, it's 16 between Hod and Tipareth. 
The chakra is base for the base instincts. And the key meanings are enslavement and temptation. Because everyone knows the devil likes to tempt. The devil's zodiac sign is Capricorn the goat, linking his identities as Pan and Saturn. Capricorn's element is Earth for material needs, and its planet is Saturn. Saturn was the Roman god of time. Time, like the devil himself, is traditionally the ultimate enemy of man. And what this is saying is that you may be enslaved to an ideal or a relationship that demands too much. What started positively or even pleasurably or even pleasurably has reversed and now you are seeing a situation for what it is. This is a destructive situation and you may be feeling controlled or under a bad influence. This is a card of greed, temptation, and materialism. Yet to change the situation, you will need to think laterally and use a little cunning. It's never worth confronting the problem as a, the negativity is endemic. Hence, the devil card often appears to describe a situation that are not worth trying to control or heal. The message is so simple. Walk away. To escape in the best way you can, regardless of the temptation of staying. The devil often arrives in a relationship reading to show lust and negative way of relating. In that one partner is gaining much more than the other. By extension of this, additional meanings of the devil are addiction, issues with sex, food, substance abuse, and overall negative thinking patterns. Some other specifics include the following. Home. Here the devil may indicate living with domineering people or dealing with a difficult landlord. Psychic vampires and generally negative people may drain your energy. You may feel controlled and invaded just now. In relationships, difficult relationships are indicated here, such as controlling partners, lust over love situations, affair, and codependent patterns. For separated partners, the devil may show financial dependencies or other ongoing money or property issues that keep you tied to the past. For career and money, you're experiencing bad financial contracts, careers that are unsatisfying, domineering bosses, or toxic work environment, but you stay because you are financially trapped. So this card is all about the destructive behaviors that keep us tied up in bondage. And this card carries with it the seven deadly sins. Envy, gluttony, greed lust, pride, sloth, and wrath. These attributes are more often than not self-inflicted, but the devil can also point to an abusive person in your life, so be sure to keep your guard up. With the devil, the only way to be set free is to break these patterns and begin the healing process, but it can be hard to pull yourself away from the things that give you instant gratification. Remind yourself that you deserve nothing but the best, and if you do the hard work now, the payoff in the end will be great. All right, and this morning I was going to mix it with a shamanic healing oracle card, which is very appropriate now, I would say, because uh, I don't know. You want to heal yourself of the devil. So let's see if uh, this might give us something that applies to the situation here. Yeah, the situation. Okay, 
you have duality black and white good and evil yes and no up and down want and don't want these are all examples of dualistic thinking what if you banned these labels from your thoughts for a day what would happen would the world end doubtful would some people get away with something no would you attach less emotion to a bad situation or drama possibly if that happened and there was less attachment to a situation you could keep your vibrations higher which would be in, which would enable you to deal more successfully with any situation that comes your way given enough time most bad situations work out in the end is it your choice to be drama free or spend a lot of time or wasted energy on a situation that will turn out okay in the end what do you choose and what i think this is saying is that okay not to worry too much about this devil card and all the trappings of it because according to this duality card it's gonna repair itself it's saying don't fret over it don't stress over it this situation is gonna work itself out all right so there won't be any big uh decisions to make or anything like that just hang in there it's just a rough time rough patch things will work out Now let's get this stuff out of the way and okay so here i'm going to cover now um the plants most suited to your your sign which you should have easiest time growing okay for Aries, you have cactus, which can produce colorful flowers, are your best bet, given how low maintenance but vibrant they are. In fact, this species does best if the soil is allowed to get nearly dry between waterings. Just remember to care for it on occasion, and it'll bring the beauty of desert bloom to your home. Okay, next. Taurus, and your plant is the Guiana chestnut plant, also known as the money tree. Feng Shui practitioners place money trees around their home or workplace to bring in positive chi or energy, which means this plant has added value that you'll likely welcome with open arms. Plus, its braided trunk offers a pretty visual pop that appeals to your sense of style and is low maintenance plant that will flourish as long as set in a sunny spot and watered frequently one to two times per week now for gemini your plant is the calancho specifically the one called flaming kathy and for gemini's you'll find no trouble finding your heavenly plant match the calancho also referred to as florist calancho or flaming katie is unusual is usually available at grocery stores nurseries and big box stores to boot the succulent is super low maintenance and produces cheerful vibrantly hued flowers that are sure to appeal to your playful aesthetic also know that whether thanks to the vibration of sounds of the carbon dioxide from breath researchers suspect that talking to your plants might help them grow so don't hesitate to do your gemini chatterbox thing around your green babies now for cancer it's the jade plant 
Cancers can't go wrong with a jade plant, which also refers to as money plant or dollar plant. Thought to bring good money luck in the home, score, and the house plant was made for security loving cancers. In the spring or summer, they need more water and less in the winter, so just be sure not to assume your jade plant needs as much hydrotherapy as you. Bonus, just when your sensitive heart and mind might make you want more suc susceptible to a case of the winter blues, they can also produce pretty romantic white flowers. Okay, now for Leos, Leos have the aloe vera. The aloe plant, a succulent that loves bright light, indirect sunlight, preserve serves as a perfect primatic choice for Leos who love laying out and soaking up the rays. That's because its leaves bear clear, cool gel that serves as a natural antioxidant for the oversun skin. Bonus, some varieties are super colorful. Think orange or purple hued, and others flower. These eye-catching qualities are sure to be appealing to a bright collar-loving lion or lioness. And I've never seen those in purple. Or orange. I'll have to try to get hold of some of that. Even though I'm not Leo. <laughs> Virgo, your best plant is mint. Keep it simple and go for a mint plant. You can't go wrong, given that the sweet-smelling, recipe-fueling, and super green plant can be grown indoors without issue. They freshen the air with a sweet smell and offer up an, an edible leaf that can be a yummy kick to cocktails and or squash digestion issues. Plus, they require minimum care, so you don't have to worry too much. A benefit for the non-stop Virgo brain of yours. Now, Libra, you have the Peace Lily. Peace Lilies were made for balance-seeking Libras. The low-maintenance plant offers up blooms that look like white flags, which symbolize peace. A message that conflict adverse Libras a message that conflict-averse Libras can certainly get behind. What more, you, they've been named by NASA as one of the several houseplants that can purify your air. Nothing like having an aesthetically pleasing houseplant that also makes it easier to breathe. For Scorpio, you have the spider plant. Being that you're comfortable with the underbelly of life, the creepier and crawlier the better, you're probably not all that freaked out by spiders and certainly not by a plant named for them, thanks to its shape. The spider plant is easy to care for and fast growing, which fuels your need for success and loves weekly waterings, which will be more which you'll be more than happy to provide as a water sign. Another bonus for family oriented scorps, it produces babies that you can repot. Okay, now we're getting down there. Sagittarius has the Calathea, or prayer plant. A house plant with a spiritually inspired name, the Calathea, or prayer, or prayer plant, might be your greenery soulmate. It is hardy and loves bright indirect sunlight, which you can certainly understand as a fire sign. Plus, with its large purple, pink, green, and red leaves, it's bold and downright dramatic, just like you. One catch, Sagittarius, it requires humidity and being kept damp, so you'll do well to ask one of your friends to come plant set when you drop everything to head out on one of your signature road trips or overseas adventures. Capricorn has the rubber plant. Consider going for a rubber plant, Capricorn, with its deep green, dignified leaves and ability to grow like a tree. It appears to your, it appeals to your seriousness and earthiness. Plus, they tend to reflect the amount of care you're putting into them. 
They'll grow taller if you give them room to, or smaller if you put them in a smaller pot, and you'll love seeing your hard work pay off. Aquarius, you have the Tillandsia, or air plant. Air plants will appear will air plants will appeal to your love of the abnormal because they don't require soil and they're a bit quirky just like you Aquarius they serve as conventional they serve as conversation starters which is perfect for you given that you pride yourself on having a wide social circle and might occasionally host friends or colleagues and being that you're fairly science minded you enjoy figuring out your air plant's watering preferences. They might like to be misted, soaked, or both. Now, Pisces has the African violet. Pisces might want, Pisces might want to consider an African violet plant, which thrives in moderate to bright indirect indoor light and offers up stunning blooms a few times a year. Because you're empathetic and sensitive, you understand just how important it is to experiment and land on the correct ratio of sunlight, water, and humidity that the African violet requires. It's not necessarily a high-maintenance plant, but it does happen to have specific needs that a Pisces will enjoy pinpointing and trying to and keying into to keep it happy. And now... Okay, you're growing these plants. So let's go over the five gardening zodiac signs who have a green thumb. And I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to do a countdown from five. Number five, Cancer. Cancers are house proud and that extends to the garden. Working with the soil, watching the first shoots and buds appear, and being able to harvest their own fruit and vegetables gives cancer a feeling of purpose. Gardening is a therapeutic way for them and allows them to work out some of their emotions in a safe way. Cancers channel their creativity and use their garden as their canvas, making it a piece of living art. Being outside, working with their hands, and seeing the results of their labor does them good. Okay. Number four, Aquarius. Aquarius is one sign that has to spend a certain amount of time outdoors, and gardening is very therapeutic for them. Gardening inspires their inspiration, and they often come up with innovative ways to do things like watering or pruning. Aquarius feels proud when they have things start to grow and even feel as though they are a part of and even feel as they are a big part of why they have the most bountiful fruit trees or why their strawberries are so sweet and juicy. Number three, Libra. And I do love flowers and plants and stuff. I have a house full of them if you all haven't seen my videos, so you'll you'll understand libras like pretty things and love to have fresh flowers in their home so what better way to ensure that than to grow their own flowers and plants libras love the peace of a garden yes yes we do and while they're doing mindless things pulling weeds or cutting back shrubs they can relax and release their anxiety and that is so true very true they also love things like bird baths, water features, and secret corners where they can read or unwind. And yes, I've got bird baths and and bird feeders and all sorts of stuff out there. So, yeah, I'm such a Libra. <laughs> Next up, Virgo. There are many lessons to learn when you have a green thumb, and Virgo is excited to learn all about gardening. Everything from what should be planted, when, and how to handle pests, watering systems, and garden layouts. With Virgo, their tool shed will be organized, and they'll always have to, 
and they'll always be able to find the correct tool for the job. Plants are on their own timetable, helping Virgo learn to be less controlling and to appreciate the unexpected. However, they don't like getting dirt under their nails, so they usually invest in a great pair of gloves. And now the number one. Drum roll. It's not surprising that Pisces should have a way with plants since they're very nurturing and caring with all living things. They are artistic and have their artistic ability in the garden by deciding what kind of plants to have. Should they go for an English garden, a rock garden, or a drought-resistant one? What colors and kinds of flowers? Do they want a vegetable garden so they can use them in their cooking or as models for painting? Pisces loves to see the sky above them, listen to the birds as they garden, and take a few moments to appreciate the beauty of nature. And so, all right. Um, so there we go. And I was wondering where I'd fit into there because, you know, like I said, I do love to garden. I love all that stuff, and uh, I'm glad Libra made it up there. And it's amazing how many Libras there are. Especially on our group page. And, this, and by the way, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed to our group page on Facebook, Please do. Uh, the link should be down in the description below. So with that, I am done for today. Hope you all have a blessed Monday. Peace. Believe because the spirits are out there. And until tomorrow. Bye bye.